you saw evidence that gave you a high confidence that the virus came from the Wuhan lab. We're going to be Not giving, that it was created there, perhaps, yeah. but that it came from there. At the right Can time, we're going to Can you illuminate any more about that? Yeah, we're going to be given a very uh, strong report as to exactly what we think happened. And I think it'll be very conclusive. President Trump last night echoing Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who says there's enormous evidence that connects the origins of COVID-19 to the Wuhan lab. The WHO says that if the United States has it, they should let them know. The Associated Press has also obtained a U.S. intelligence report that concludes that Chinese leaders initially concealed the severity of the virus to hoard medical supplies from the rest of the world. But the headline over all of this is a brewing escalation of tension between the United States and China over this whole situation. So where is this headed? Joining me now, Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas, a member of the, of the Intel and Armed Services Committee. Senator, always good to have you with us. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I'd like to start by Thanks, playing a soundbite from Dr. Mark, Dr. Mike Ryan, who is the WHO executive director. He was asked about this enormous evidence. Here's what he said. We have not received any data or specific evidence from the U.S. government relating to the purported origin of the virus. So, uh, 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 from our perspective, th this remains speculative. If that data and evidence is available, then it will be for the United States government to decide whether and when it can be shared. But it's difficult for WHO to operate <clears throat> in an information vacuum. Hmm. How's that going to work out, Senator? Well, they also haven't gotten a lot of information from the Chinese Communist Party either. But, Martha, look, all of the evidence points at one of those two labs in Wuhan where they researched bat-based coronaviruses. We know the Chinese lied about it originating in the food market from uh, at least as far back as January, where they apparently didn't even sell bats of any kind, much less the species of bat from which we believe this virus migrated from yeah. uh, or into humans. Um, but all of the evidence, although it's circumstantial, to be sure, points at those labs. If mm -hmm. China wants to dispel any kind of suspicion about those labs, which is uh, pre present all over the world, then they should open up their labs and open up Wuhan and tell us exactly yeah. what happened there and let us review all the safety protocols in place. Well, they are definitely feeling the global heat on this, so that would certainly behoove them to do that. If they want to, you know, clear this up in everybody's mind, they should be very forthcoming with what they have. I don't think anybody expects that that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, but there's discussion in the National Security Council in the United States of starting a different sort of global medical organization that is not so beholden to China. Uh, that would include Taiwan as well, which I would imagine would not sit very well with the Chinese government. Do you think that's what should be done? We very well may need to do that, Martha. I've said for weeks now that Dr. Tedros and his team needs to leave the WHO and leave now. But if they don't leave and if the WHO doesn't commit itself to more transparency, more accountability and other reforms, then the United States should lead the world's leading countries from a scientific standpoint to create a new organization that will be a world health mm -hmm. organization, not a world politics organization. As you mentioned, Taiwan, which has done one of the very best jobs in controlling the spread of this virus, was precluded from even sharing information in the early days of this yeah. pandemic because Beijing demanded that the WHO not cooperate with Taiwan at all, which is a true outrage. So you have pushed back on the, uh, you know, Chinese students who come here to study, these Confucius Institutes that exist at um, universities across the country. Uh, last night when we spoke with President Trump, I asked him, you know, do you think this is going to change your relationship with President Xi, you know, uh, the trust issues that are around this? And there was a question that we did not get to that came from a woman who organizes exchange students, and she's from Apple Valley, California. Here's Candice Quiroz. My name is Candice Quiroz. I'm an exchange student coordinator. I have students come from China from high school age to university age. They come from one week to a whole school year. How will the COVID-19 impact any further exchange student programs? With all of the hate and degrading that the Chinese people are enduring, will the American people please stop blaming the Chinese people for their government's actions? What would you say to Candace, Senator? 
Well, first, Candace, it's very important that we not blame the Chinese people. The Chinese people are the first and the worst victims of the Chinese Communist Party, both in this pandemic and going back 70 plus years when they've killed tens of millions of their own people. But most exchange programs like the ones that she runs would not be affected by any reforms because it's a good thing to have young Chinese students studying in our high schools, even for just a few weeks, or coming here and being exposed to the American way of life. But what we cannot allow to continue is training Chinese Communist Party affiliated students at the highest levels of graduate and postgraduate yeah education in the most advanced scientific and technological fields. Not only is it right for espionage, but it is training our adversaries in the world's most cutting edge technologies, yeah. something that we should never do. It's a great point. I want to squeeze in one more with you. The Chinese ministry warned, uh, warned President Xi that there could be potential for armed confrontation even with the United States because of the tensions that they claim are as bad as they were during the Tiananmen Square situation. So they're concerned about how this looks for them on the global stage with this pandemic. You know, how where do you think this is headed and what do you think China will do to try to fix that reputation globally. Well, Martha, I saw that report that said that anti-Chinese uh, Chinese Communist Party sentiment is at its highest peak around the world, not just in the United States, since the Tiananmen Square massacres, and it should be. China is a pariah state, and it's time for the world to change our relationship with China, because China has not changed its behavior for 30 plus years. Well, we'll see. We see uh, some video from a while back of President Xi with President Trump. Uh, a lot of trade negotiations to be worked out, so we're going to see where this goes. Senator Cotton, thank you. Always good to see you, sir. Thank you, Martha.